I'm doing a review for this book. It's Biological Nurturing by Suzanne Colson. Okay, I'm going to apologise now um, if this doesn't sound very good. I've had a lot of audio issues, so I'm going to have one more go. So I was interested to read this book and find out more about biological nurturing, or as it is more commonly known, laid back breastfeeding. My personal experience of this hasn't been successful, either trying it for myself or attempting to support mums doing it. So I am a little sceptical, but I'm open-minded and interested to learn more about this new style of breastfeeding. Colson has a strong background supporting mothers during pregnancy, birth and breastfeeding. And I'm particularly impressed by her experience with Michelle O'Dent, who I am a keen follower of. And many of Colson's suggestions about breastfeeding mirror O'Dent's suggestions about birth. I was surprised in the early chapters how different Colson's biological nurturing was from current standard breastfeeding advice and how scathing she could be of current breastfeeding support. Although I did recognise the uncomfortableness and anxiety that is often present in these situations. Biological nurturing is very different from current breastfeeding advice, from mum's position to baby's position, and all those differences take me out of my comfort zone. I'm not saying Colson is wrong, but in the opening chapters of her book, she has blown my underpinning of breastfeeding knowledge away. So I hope she can give me something concrete to replace it. Colson was quite scathing about the current methods taught to mothers to breastfeed. And as someone who has spent a lot of time using these methods to try and help mothers breastfeed, I did feel a bit defensive. My initial defensiveness was quickly diminished though, after I read Colson's critical review on current post-birth practice and the common hurdles that women face to successfully initiate breastfeeding. I identified with everything she said, either from my own personal experience or from my experience with other mums. And I quickly realized I have fallen into the trap of accepting these hurdles as being just a part of the situation or even being natural. Instead of trying to understand them further, and to understand why they occur and to challenge them. Examples of this are the latching problems that many women face when their baby can't seem to find the nipple. Their hands get in the way, they kick against mum's body creating too much space between them, as well as the pain in the wrist from holding your baby in the right place and the pain in the back from trying to keep a good posture and not being able to see properly what's going on. Colson spoke about how currently breastfeeding is thought to be best guided by the baby, as in the skin-to-skin -skin breast crawl, or by strict instruction on correct positioning from health professionals. Biological nurturing aims to put women back at the centre of breastfeeding with guidance from health professionals, but ultimately with mothers leading. In explaining the current situation, Colson describes the oxymoron of teaching women something that we are told is natural and how putting women into a situation where they are being instructed and taught will weaken their natural instincts of how to breastfeed. I agree. Colson makes a strong argument that women have the innate instincts to breastfeed their babies and need only a little guidance, but importantly, a conducive atmosphere to release the hormones and instincts that will help them attach their babies to the breast. Colson emphasises the need for women and babies to enjoy breastfeeding and biological nurturing encourages that more than traditional breastfeeding which can be very stressful in the early days. Biological nurturing uses the position that baby lays in the womb before birth to help find a comfortable position when they're feeding in the early days after birth. And this means that most babies lay vertically down mum's body. This sounds a bit cramped, but as Colson pointed out, when women recline even a little bit, their body is opened up, allowing more variable space. There is a positive use of gravity in biological nurturing, which made sense in my mind, especially considering the positive effect gravity can have on the birth process. With biological nurturing, Colson encourages mums to keep their babies at the breast as much as possible, sleeping cheek to breast and not to wait for the baby to be in an awake alert state 
bring them to feed. This is particularly encouraged in the first 48 to 72 hours when breastfeeding is being initiated. Colson describes the rapidly changing sleep states of babies and how having baby at the breast when they're in light sleep means they can latch more easily than waiting for them to be in alert awake state where they can quickly become agitated and upset, which then makes it harder for them to successfully attach to the breast, as well as making mum feel anxious. Colson says a number of times that worry and anxiety are the enemies of reproductive events, such as pregnancy, birth and breastfeeding. And that when mothers focus on their babies, such as gazing at their babies, this can release a cascade of instinctual mothering behaviours. It's also known to release oxytocin, which is an important hormone in bonding and breastfeeding. Therefore, biological nurturing attempts to take the emphasis away from the worry and anxiety that are caused by focusing on sitting up and holding the baby correctly, or worrying about the tiny amount of colostrum that can be expressed and what that means about their milk supply, and instead encouraging mums to focus on their baby and allowing their instincts, comfort and enjoyment to guide them as much as helpful suggestions. It struck me watching the videos of biological nurturing that were referenced in this book that there is a much better opportunity for eye contact between mum and baby, which is a great thing. I actually wish I'd known more about this when I had my own babies because it sounds great. This book reiterates what a gift breastfeeding is and that facilitating that relationship between mother and baby in a positive way is attainable. Biological nurturing brings together different strands of early mothering. Close physical contact and keeping baby at the, at the address of their mother's breast. Eye to eye contact and on face gazing. Mother's comfort, baby's comfort. Support and guidance, as well as encouraging mother's instincts and maximising the use of baby's reflexes. The biological nurturing approach isn't one intervention or one set of instructions, it's a blend of numerous different focuses and it will take knowledge and time from anyone supporting it. I hadn't expected to be so convinced by Colson's book, but I have been. At the same time as being convinced, I also have a lot of questions. So the position of the baby is very different from general current breastfeeding advice. And I wonder, won't it hurt? How is that baby going to get a big mouthful of breast? The main reason we are following such strict guidelines about the correct way to breastfeed is to reduce nipple pain. And I know from experience that very small changes in position and attachment can really affect how comfortable breastfeeding is. I would really like more information about how biological nurturing can reduce the problems of nipple pain especially when the baby doesn't appear to have such a deep latch. Colson says that in her study, problems of painful latch could be instantly improved with biological nurturing, and I would like to hear more about how this works. Being reclined. Is mum going to feel comfortable like that if she is there for a long time? How easily can she adjust her position when she is there? I would be interested to hear more about what Colson recommends for mums who have had caesareans, and how the baby laying down her body could affect her wound area. I'm also wondering, is it as good as it sounds? I would be really interested to hear other people's experiences of biological nurturing. Baby's sleep location when mum is asleep was only very briefly covered, and I was disappointed that Colson skimmed over the issue of bed sharing or co-sleeping or whatever the currently accepted term is. This is such an under-discussed issue. Many breastfeeding mothers worry that they don't have enough milk or that they're doing something wrong because every time they try to put their baby down, they wake up and want to feed again. The baby isn't feeding for more milk. They're feeding because they're upset that mum just tried to put them down. Until we face this issue of where babies sleep and have an open and honest conversation, this problem won't go away. I also really don't like the label laid back breastfeeding and I think it should be scrapped because it gives the instant impression that mum should be lying down. 
If not fully reclined, then nearly. And this is not a desirable or practical feeding position for most mums. What Colson talks about is reclining to a comfortable seated position or semi-reclined position rather than the traditional sat up with a straight back. The term laid back breastfeeding also gets twinned with the breast crawl, which Colson made her own criticisms of. So I think a break from that phrase would be helpful. As much as I like the ideas of biological nurturing, I struggle to see how it could be successfully implemented within our current maternity services framework. Colson describes biological nurturing as a balance between the mother's gentle instinctive guidance, which is empowered through the success and enjoyment of the process, and the baby's comfort and instincts. And for both of them, the process is a halfway house between their combined world of pregnancy and the separate lives that they will go on to live. It sounds great. I feel convinced. I even feel broody. But I think it will be a massive struggle to deliver that complex message and to provide that individualised service within the framework of current maternity services. That's not to say that certain health professionals could not understand it and provide it well, but as a service, waiting, standing back, being hands off, allowing the mother to lead, there needs to be a sizable shift before there is space for that in the general service that most mothers and babies receive. Colson has narrowed down six components of biological nurturing and she refers to them throughout the book, expanding on each one and describing how they work together. I felt that this further explanation was absolutely necessary to fully understand and put into practice biological nurturing. So Colson gives a full and convincing description of each component and taken together, the whole approach is quite revolutionary. The six components are undoubtedly complex in their possibilities and they can work together differently for different mothers. This is not a one size fits all method. It's for the mother to find the right fit of the different components for her with guidance when needed. The method encourages and empowers the intuition and instincts of mother and baby and builds on and strengthens their close relationship. That has to be a good thing. This book is really amazing for me personally. It's done something that not many books I read do. It's made me completely reevaluate something that I know a lot about. I know about breastfeeding. I've breastfed my own children. I've supported other women on their breastfeeding journeys. And I'm just generally obsessed with it. If I was on Mastermind, breastfeeding would be my specialist subject. Colson is advocating a whole new approach to breastfeeding in the early weeks. And in fact, the earlier the better. To take accepted problems or experiences and approach them from a completely different angle is a difficult thing to do. And I felt convinced by her arguments. Colson puts women and babies at the centre of her approach she focuses on the relationship between mother and baby physically and emotionally and emphasises how supporting that relationship will allow breastfeeding to happen naturally. This was not an instructive breastfeeding book for mothers. It wasn't even directed towards health professionals. It was Colson's journey. I felt like Colson was laying out as much of the jigsaw as she could to give the reader a complete understanding of her discovery. I thought it was exciting and moving, and I hope that people interested in breastfeeding or who are in contact with breastfeeding mothers read this book and attempt to use this excellent book of guidance to help mums be successful at breastfeeding and to enjoy it. Okay, thank you. Here it is again. 